Some of you may remember that in 1967, the Beatles performed one of the first worldwide broadcasts on television. People have a hard time today understanding, but there was a time when you did have all this connection, okay? And it was a big deal. And what was the song that the Beatles sang that went wildly popular? All You Need Is Love. Okay, some of you I see you're shaking your head. You heard it. All You Need Is Love. Now, that is actually a very Christian message. Some of the words of the song may not have fit in exactly what I'm preaching about, but the refrain is, all you need is love. Let me tell you the story of a woman who exemplified this. What happened is a, a little boy, baby boy, was born in a hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he was born blind, he had cerebral palsy, and his parents abandoned him in the hospital. They just left him. So the little boy now, the nurses are trying to figure out who's going to take this child. You know, the prognosis wasn't very good for this little boy. Didn't know whether he'd ever walk, didn't speak. He certainly was never going to see. So they thought of a nurse who had worked there for some years. She raised five children. Her name was May Lemke. And they Let's try May. So they called May and described all the problems that this little baby had and said, you know, he's probably going to die young, but would you take him? And this is what May said. If I take this baby, he won't die young, and I'll be happy to take him. So May took in this little boy. She named him Leslie, and each day... She worked with this baby, massaging him, trying to get responses from him. Twelve years it took her for the boy to stand up on his own. He stood up when he was twelve years old. At the age of fifteen, he began to walk. As they would get packages in the mail, those of you who remember before tape, there was string. Do you remember string? And you would have your package. There was string this way, string that way. So little Leslie, when they would get a package at home, may notice that he would pluck the string. So she thought, well, wait, hey, maybe music. Maybe that will touch him. Maybe he's got rhythm. So she got a piano, put it in his room. Remember, he's blind, so he can't read any sheet music. And you can't read Braille while you're playing the piano, right? So... She had to teach him by ear and actually didn't get much of a response. Until one night, she and her husband were asleep in bed and she heard music in the house. Woke her up, she turned to her husband, she said, honey, did you leave the radio on? He said, no, I didn't leave the radio on. So they get up and they go to Leslie's room, open the door, he is playing a Tchaikovsky piano concerto, actually number one, all by ear. He had heard it on the radio or recording maybe the night before. All of a sudden, this boy that had been abandoned, thought of useless, now plays incredible music by ear. And after that, they got one piece after another. He could play jazz, he could play classical, he could play just about anything. And if he's still living, his mother died in the 1990s, and it was all because of love that this young man became a great concert pianist, Leslie Lemke, who had been left for nothing. All you need is love. And when you apply that love to others, you can see extraordinary realities. Well, let's talk about the reality of love. In the Old Covenant, when God revealed his name, it was, I am who I am. In other words, I am life. God is the God of being. And it's absolutely important for us to understand that reality. Without God, there is no life. Without life, that's the end of it, right? So God is the ground of our being, the source of life, because God is life itself. 
In the new covenant, Jesus revealed to us that God is love. Simply by his very being, he, the word made flesh. He's love incarnate. Okay? And then as John puts it in his first letter, chapter 4, from which we hear today, he says, love is of God, and then he concludes, God is love. Now, this is like a mathematical equation, where you could say 2 plus 2 equals 4, or you can reverse it and say 4 equals 2 plus 2. It's not a mathematical equation. I want you to think of it as subject and object. You remember your English class. Okay, the subject, subject, God is love. So God is the being of love. This is what we're understanding now. Not only is God life, but God is love. Also, Jesus knows that God is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you have to put truth together with life and love, and then you get a greater picture of the mystery of who is. Now, it is important for us to make distinctions. We can judge and discriminate about ideas, not people. Notice God creates us out of love, therefore God loves all people. God created us all, right? But ideas, we have to make judgments about those ideas. So a parent who loves the child discriminates between allowing a child to run in the street or play in a park. You have to make a judgment, right? If your parents love you, they don't let you run in the street. Oh, but I don't want that rule. I want to play in the street. No, I want you to be alive so you're not allowed to pray. So there are commandments that your parents have for you. And so Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what is his greatest command? We've got plenty. We've got the Ten Commandments. We've got the command, love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. That's the old covenant. His new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. That's a different kind of love. Because we can all say, in English, we will say, well, I love um, all. I love Burger King. I love my pet. And I love my mama. Okay. We can say all of those, but they're different kinds of love. At least I hope they are. <laughs> right? Your love for mom is what we would call a filial love. Okay? And if it really, when you're taking care of your mom and your mom is dying, then you might get love, which is sacrificial love. Right? Just like May Lemke, who made extraordinary sacrifices for this baby and brought about life through love. So there are degrees of love. And there was an article, it was either yesterday or the day before in the newspaper about, you know, many people have service animals and very legitimately helping all kinds of people, but there, there are those who fake it. So, for example, there was a man who was in great distress because he had lost his service alligator. I, I just, what planet am I on? I don't know. A service alligator, he had, and travels with his service alligator, I guess in his truck, and he lost him in Georgia or Florida. Well, I'm sure that alligator, you know, went into a bayou, and you'll never see that alligator again, hopefully. And he says, but he doesn't bite. He's very loving. Mamma mia. Okay. He loves his alligator. No. Okay. So there's all this bizarre. But this is not bizarre. This is truth. Right? The word of God is living and it is true. So if we're going to love as the Lord loves us, this is that height of love, agape love, or sacrificial love, then it has to flow through us. Pope John Paul XXIII, not John Paul XXIII, excuse me, Pope John XXIII, John XXIII in the 1960s was having a conference and the question was posed, how do we know what is the purpose of life? And he was given standard answers that you would learn in the catechism. 
to know, love, and serve God in this life and to be with God forever in the next, right? And to love your neighbor as yourself, as the Bible teaches us. And he shook his head and he said, it is also to help others know, love, and serve God in this world and to be with God forever in the next. In other words, it has to be about others. Love is a movement to the others. Christ's love is like a fountain of flowing love, right? And who is this love? Holy Spirit, right? Love the subject, God the Father loves, and the object is the Son, and the love that they share is the Holy Spirit, okay? So this is the mystery of the Trinity, the greatest mystery of who God is. So our love is meant to flow out of us. I'll give you an example, and a practical example. Next week we will be Help Birthright, a wonderful organization. It's actually head, headed by some of our parishioners. Birthright helps mothers in distress, in difficult circumstances, to actually have their babies, raise their babies, as May Lemke did, but in many, many, many circumstances, right? It's non-judgmental. It's sheer love. Help that mother have that child and give her everything she needs to make that happen, right? One of the most marvelous organizations. This is love incarnate, right? Love lived out. And we see this, as I say, in parents, mothers and fathers, the sacrifices they make for their children. That's normal. That's healthy. That's God designed. But we don't so much see it in our wounded society. That's the purpose of the Christian. We're to be a leaven in the society, a leaven of grace. In other words, not only what we have received in our homes, in our church, but what we are willing to give. And when we do that, then we will really be literally and figuratively singing a new song unto the Lord. That's Psalm 98. And by the way, it is not an option. The scripture says... Sing joyfully to the Lord, break into song, sing praise, if you want to. That's not what the Bible says. Now, why is it that some of us Catholics just won't open our mouths to sing? Well, there are, there are all kinds of theories. You know, <clears throat> the Irish will sing very well in a pub, but not in their church. I was in Ireland with a group. I was shepherd of St. Patrick's Church many years ago. So we're going in the footsteps of St. Patrick. And the first thing that struck me in the celebration of the Mass in Ireland is how quickly they do it. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord be with you. And it's just nonstop. There was no time for singing. So I asked this priest who happened to be at the shrine of Our Lady. And here we are in the month of Our Lady, month of May. So I asked him, come to find out he was a, the elderly retired archbishop of that diocese and he explained to me that for centuries the Irish had to celebrate mass in the fall on what they called rocks these rock altars right because it was against the law for Catholics to celebrate mass and so they would have sentinels at the four corners of the forest crowds together have mass and get over as quickly as you could before the British came that's how it was. And those habits, after hundreds of years, are hard to break. So, you know, I would get down, just couldn't keep up with the Irish. Okay? No time for singing. You can sing in the pub, but not right here. <laughs> then others will say, well, the reason we don't sing so well, we can't compare anything to the Lutherans, who are regular singers by, by course, is because of the Italians. Say, okay, what's that theory? Well, we all know Italians have fabulous opera voices, and so they have fantastic choirs, which they do, and so they would leave it to the opera singers, right, to sing the parts of the mass. Well, I don't know if that's the case. Then there's the third group that says, I have a terrible voice, I can barely sing, so I'm not going to sing. It's not an option. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a joyful song. So give God the voice God gave you. I don't care if it's on pitch or not, right? We have vocalists. We have wonderful 
cantors and choirs that are supposed to lead us, they're on pitch and you do your best to follow, right? But give God the voice God gave you. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And the point is, one of the fruits of having a relationship with God, who is love, and Jesus said, I you my friends, when we have a friendship with Christ, then we're going to want to sing. Because one of the fruits of that relationship in the Holy Spirit is joy. So dear brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in this Easter season and sing. You know, if your horse won the Kentucky Derby yesterday, you'd be singing and shouting and praising, right? Or if your team wins a game, same thing. So let's sing unto the Lord with joyful hearts as we praise God and we thank God for the revelation, fine love, in the person of Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.